Hi everybody, it's Crazy, and for another week, uh, it's Wednesday, and we're up to episode number 22. Um, I did some feedback last on the last video. I asked uh, some, of, some of the people out there how they, you know, if they got anything from these videos. And uh, one of my friends told me, well, it's not what we get, it's what you're getting. And I do agree with that. And Day, thank you, dude. You know, that, that does not mean a lot to me for you to uh, give me some good advice like that. Um, today, uh, I'm working from the same book, which is, let me go ahead and click the button here, <laughs> Automate the Boring Stuff with Python. Now, um, I started this book with the assumption that I was going to go all the way through it, and I'm going to, but there's something different. I decided to give myself a challenge. Um, before I get to episode number 30, and see, I'm up to episode number Okay, <laughs> um, I'm going to try to get to episode 30 and finish this book. The only reason why is because a lot of people are talking about my oops video and they're, you know, they're like, well, you know, I, I see it's going a little bit further and a little bit further, but when are you going to start doing stuff on it? So if you'd like to know that, become a patron <laughs> or be one of my trusted or my uh, crazy fam and you're in. Uh, so, you have to check out the Oops video for that one. But this is the learned experience, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm up to page number 161. Let me find out where my cursor went. There he is. Okay, 161. Now, this is where I ended off last week. Is it? Yeah, no, no, no. no. Gotta go down to the bottom. I'm sorry, it was supposed to be 162. Uh, matching new lines with the dot character. Now... This one was a little bit, you know, I, I enjoy it because it does make a lot of sense um, and how things actually work in it, work in, uh, in Python. But um, I got down to a certain point, and I'm going to go straight down to it. You know, these are all the uh, review uh, regex symbols that you can use. And, and some of them seem cloudy at first, but once you start doing some of it and you look back on it, and then you go, oh. Oh, okay, I get it. You know, so some of those are a little bit, you know, iffy. But I'm going to scroll on down because all I got, I was understanding all this. I was understanding all this. I was understanding all this. And then, come on, a little more, a little more. Of course, you get to do a project. Now, I'm going to show that one here in just a few minutes. You come down to the summary. I actually finished this chapter. And then I got into the practice questions. Now, Here's my problem, and I realize my problem. Every time I look at questions or quizzes or tests or anything like that, my mind automatically seizes. I can't think. I can't understand. And I'm trying to answer them, and I'm like, ah. And then I continued further down, and I got to this one. How would you write a regex that matches a number with commas for every three digits? It must match the following, but not but not the ones below. Now, <laughs> I sat there and I, I I just went completely blank. I mean, I I even tried doing this and and I was trying and I was trying and every time I see any kind of question, you know, or quiz or like I said, a test, I immediately my mind goes completely blank do you have that problem you know if you do let me know how to get around it because i don't know how to get around that uh, i've been i've been that way since i was a teenager in high school um but i i did some research on it and i, I knew what this one was because re import re you get that yeah but all the other ones as i slowly ran through it started throwing me off and i could not get it and I even tried a few, and I wrote them down on there as well. And I was like, yeah, okay, I can do these now. I just have to get past that fear that this is a test, or this is a quiz, or this is something to test my ability. The word test in my mind automatically makes me want to lock up. So let's go back up here to 162, okay, which matching new lines. Um, we'll switch over this one here and with that you know I, I i started putting these down and the easiest way to look at all these like i said i did the print on it you know to kind of help me out to help me learn Oop. 
I don't know why it popped up over there, but it's over here now. Okay, um, and I went ahead, and like I said, you know, I went through every one of these, and I'm going, wow, this is, you know, really interesting. I even wrote the the uh, review of regex symbols down, and I went and got all the way through it, and you know, did managing complex regexes, which is actually pretty interesting. But the only problem I have with that is why, you know, this is a considered a one line you know, a uh, piece of code, right? It's all right there. You ain't got to fight with it. It's there. It's done. You don't have to do anything else, you know, explicit with it. But when you're doing complex ones, it gets really long. With, since, you know, since this one's like a really long, you know, regex, it can actually, you know, somebody looking at this is going to go, uh, 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 what? I don't get that. So I get why you want to make it simpler so, for others to understand. But for code simplicity i wouldn't mind doing that instead because it really doesn't matter to me what it looks like to other people when i'm working on it you know later on in time i can come back and do this right here and make it spread over multiple lines you know um you know as they say verbose 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 let me know in the comments how you say that. <laughs> um, I always say verbose. I don't know why, but it's verbose, I believe. Uh, but when you want to create a multi-line string that makes it, you know, look a little bit easier in the code, then, you know, you take up all these lines and it's like, that's a lot of lineage, right? Do you really want that? Or would it be simpler just to have the one-liner on there and then later on put that in here? But, you know, put the, you know, the verbose in there. You know, that, that was one of the ones that just kind of stuck with me. It was like, that's just big to me. It's like too much, you know. But for simplicity's sake, yeah, I get it. Um, you know, and then I went into combining these, you know, combining ignore case, combining dot all, and combining verbose. You know, uh, it was really interesting. And then I got to go do a project. Yes, I got to do a project. So... To get rid of that. See, there it is. And this is the project. I, I wrote all the stuff down. You know, um, what you know, what it entails, how to do, you know, what it does. You know, it uh, gives you a little bit of insight of how to, you know, uh, uh, look, you know, get your code, you know, idea down first and then do your code. You know, and <laughs> I sat there and was like, okay, before tackling this project, draw up a high-level plan for what this program needs to do. Okay, to me, that makes sense, you know, because you really want to figure out what you're going to do with the program, you know. But on a really big program, it's, you know, you would really, really want something like this, but you got to be able to put every detail in there and then come back in and add more stuff. So, and this one here says, for example, this project will need the following. Get the text off the clipboard. Find all the phone numbers and email addresses in the text. Paste them back into the clipboard. And then it says, now start thinking about how this might work in code. So, you know, you get three objectives. You know, it says, okay, try, you know, you're going to do this. You're going to do this. You're going to do this. Okay, now you got to look at it via the code base. You know, how are you going to do, how are you going to put it in code? You know, so, of course, we're going to use uh, Piperclip. You know, the Piperclip module, because it's going to have the copy and paste for strings, okay? You know, and as you go through, you know, it tells you each individual one. And it says, now, this basically is a roadmap for this project. So that now we've already, we've created a roadmap code-wise, okay? We created a, uh, a plan for what we wanted to do. You know, we did a roadmap of what we wanted, okay? And then we start doing it. And these are all the steps that, you know, you should go through in order to do this. You're going to create the regex. You know, you're going to create the uh, regex for the uh, phone numbers, regex for the emails. You're going to find all the matches on the clipboard text. And then you're going to join all of them together and make it into one deal and put it back on the clipboard. Okay, so I did that. And, you know, I was like, I was really impressed because I did it. <laughs> um, the way this one works is... I, I put these in because I wanted to see something. <laughs> I wanted to see, you know, how it worked out and to give myself information. Uh, you know, I wanted to know what the question mark for. So I went back and checked it, you know, 
I check these to see what it means, and it actually means the first three digits of the uh, basically the area code. Now, the question mark means it's option, you know, optional. You know, so is it there? If it's not, no big deal. We'll put it on there. Um, you know, the join, you know, I did not know you could use join in that. I was like, okay, we can join them together and make them one. So that makes sense. And then as I went through it, you know, I, I rolled all these down and I did the code out to where I can see what it does. Each, each, what each one does and what it's supposed to do. Um, then, you know, I went ahead and did the same thing with the email. And, of course, did the same thing with the email on the, you know, information part. And then I put in, you know, matches, yada, yada, yada. So if it's on the clipboard, it would work, right? Well, it does. And if I hit, you know, uh, hit the execute button right now, it's going to say there was nothing found because there is no emails or phone numbers on my clipboard. Yeah, I'll even show you. And... Where did my thing go? Right, here you are. Okay. No phone numbers or email addresses found because I have nothing on my clipboard. Okay. I haven't highlighted anything with numbers, you know, telephone numbers or email addresses. But as you see, it shows on this everything that I was talking about so I can remember it. I wanted to print them so that way I can see them and then let the program run. Okay. So that's what I got up to. And then I ended on page 71, 171. And let me go ahead and put that up here. One, seven, one. Now, I believe that was on Saturday or Sunday. I was working on that. I was tinkering around with it. And then I got to, you know, the formidable questions. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm, not, I'm never going to figure these out. And then I, I slept on it. I actually said, you know what? gonna go ahead and forget it and do it go ahead and sleep on it tonight after i get off work tomorrow i'll play with it and i actually figured this out um let me see if i can find that code oh, that's not it that means i need to let's bring this over yeah there it is let me bring it up real quick I don't know why I didn't open it <laughs> originally. Okay, and we'll switch back over here so you can see. Boop. Okay, so I did, like I said, I did a couple of the questions, and I was trying to, you know, figure them out and see if I can do them. And I, you know, remembered how import, you know, re, you know, uh, qu uh, question number two. Let's just go up here. I didn't do them all. I was going to. Okay, so question two, what are the raw strings often used when creating a regex objects? The back or forward slash. Okay, or is that no, I'm sorry, it's the backslash. My bad. Strike that, reverse it. Okay. <laughs> um question number three uh, is what does search method return? The search method returns searches for patterns in a string. Okay. So it's looking, you know, it returns patterns in a string okay uh number four how do you get the actual strings that match the pattern from a match object the group the group method does that it returns string to the match text okay you know i did five i did six and then i got down to question number 21 i didn't do 20 because I it, I had I was aggravated. I was like, I'm just gonna skip that one for right now. I'll come back to it. <laughs> um, number twenty one says, how would you write a regex that matches the full name of someone whose last name is Nakame Nak Nakamato Nakamato? Yeah. If I said that wrong, I'm sorry if your name is that. <laughs> um, you can assume that the first name that comes before it will always be one word that begins with the capital letter or it begins with a capital letter the regex must match the following and these these three it has to match but not follow these four why because this one the first name is not capitalized this one it's mr it's not a name um just the last name it doesn't have no first name doesn't count and if the last name isn't capitalized so over here I put all those in. 
Okay, every one of them. Okay, so they're all in here. I don't know why it doesn't go back anymore. So I figured it out. I said, okay, got to think. It's got to be a capital letter, right? So I wanted to create my own custom class because I want it to be A through Z. Okay, so the first letter has got to be A through Z. Okay, followed by the rest of the word. Followed by the rest of the word. A space, a space, the same, okay, capital letter with the, word, uh, with the rest of the name. Okay, so you would think, okay, so when I hit this and I run it, it won't work right because Mr. begins with a capital, right? You know, uh, Nakam Nakamoto? Nakamoto, you know, is correct, but there's a period in there, so it will not accept it as a full thing. Okay, so I'm going to hit it and let's see if we guessed it right. Look, I got the three. Out of all those, those three are the ones that came up, which are the ones that are correct. Now, it doesn't matter if there's a, a second, you know, uh, capital letter in there as long as the first one is a capital letter and it's a complete word. Okay? Um, so, all these all ended the same. But all the other ones did not because, you know, there was one with no capitalization. Of the first name there's one that has mr right here okay and there's one with just the last name so uh, and then one without a capital on the last name so you notice those didn't show up because they aren't part of the regex i was looking for so this is a neat concept of trying to figure uh have it go through something to find a certain string of words and a lot of people are like, yeah, that, that's pretty neat, but they're, it's mainly good for find and search functions. Yeah, it is. What, what about if you wanted to find something in a code? Could you do a code regex? I guess one to think about. All right, so with that being said, let me switch back over to the book. Okay, with that being said, <laughs> um, I made it, yay! Finally, to the app, end of chapter seven, which in I was going to do the strong passwords detection, and I just ran out of time because I was actually going to do it today, but today's video day. So, guess what? Y'all get to see that on the next video. Um, I'm like I said, I'm going to try to power through a lot of these, so I may not do a lot of the practice projects. I probably won't do this one, even though the version of strip would you know uh, regex the version of strip. Um, I would like to do that to try to get a little bit better knowledge, but I don't know if I'm going to have enough time to do it. Because like I said, I'm up to episode number 22, and I've got till episode 30. So, eight more episodes, and I've got to be done with this book. If you look up here and up here, I'm only at 195 of 505. So, I still got several hundred pages to go through. So, don't know if I can make it. I might have to make it up to episode 40, but I'm going to I'm going to push for 30, okay? So, with that being said, um I made it to uh, to the end of that. So, you know, let me go ahead and click off of that. So, up to chapter um to the end of chapter 7. I will try to do the strong password detection because I think that's an interesting one to learn uh, red Jexes. Um but I'm going to go to a website right now and a lot of people know this website oh i gotta bring that up here first hey everybody knows this website don't you if you don't know this website then you haven't done a lot of game devving with this program <laughs> um blender is a really good program for doing animations games you know uh, assets you know you name it um really really good program it's free open source it's wonderful they're up to 2.93.3 which is why i need to get it again because now they're on top of it um but guess what the next one is up bge up bge is the game uh, the bge reinvented <laughs> um the guys over at the up bge up over at a BGE are really, really, I mean, cranking down on trying to get 3.0 up and going good. Um, a lot of the people that I know that are on the BGE server said, uh, 
like the 2.x version more so than the 3.0 version because the U, uh, the the API has changed, the UI has changed. It's a completely different animal. Okay, so you got 2. Point, you know x and then you got 3.x. They're two different deals. They're still basically the same. You still got the kind of same functionality, but 3.0.3 is the Blender version of the, uh, 3.0. <laughs> wow, that's a lot to go with. Um, with that, the only bad thing about it is, you know, you you got to do with it at a, as an experimental. Now I'm gonna go to the downloads just to show you what I'm talking about. Um, the stable releases is the 2.x version. Okay, that's uh, basically based off the 2.79b version of uh, Blender, and they're they're no longer updating it. It's done. 2.79 is considered history. Um, but UBGE has some release notes and stuff like that that are not release notes, but uh, new releases and some bug fixes and stuff like that that they did for it and brought the old uh, 0.2.5 up to 2.5b. Okay, um, so if you're into the old Blender, this is or the old UBGE and old Blender uh, API, this is the one you want to go with. Um, if you want to test the new and improved uh, BGE, playing around on the new and improved Blender with the brand new API, the brand new G, uh, GUI, the whole nine yards. You know, me myself, I want to dive into that because it's interesting. Now, one of one of the guys that's uh, in the uh, BGE server is doing some conversions. Um, uh, Random Panda does has been working on trying to get some of the older, you know, from the old 2.7 releases over to the 0.3 releases. So he's working really hard, you know. So Panda, you're doing great. Thanks, dude, for all the all the stuff you're doing. Make some videos on it. Help us out. Bring us back into the plus, okay? Um, so with the alpha builds, as they say, that's the 0.3 version. It's based off of Blender. 3.0 so please uh, understand that a lot of people have been having issues with that the 3.0 version of blender is what the 0.3 x version is based off of okay it's not based off of the 2.93 version which is this one right here it's not based off of that it is based off the experimental version so make sure that if you're going to compare a BGE with the regular Blender, make sure you're using the Blender 3.0 experimental release. Okay. So with that being said, um, I'm going to be used, I'm going to be playing a lot with the alpha uh, version, but I am doing a couple of games as well with the old, older stable release. Okay. Um, uh, a BG, uh, not a BG, uh, the Blender Wars is was being done on the old 0.2.0 version of UpBGE. So uh, if you'd like to check that out, their uh, description is uh, not their description, but their information is in the description. There we go. <laughs> Get it out, crazy. Put it out there. Okay, so I'm gonna bring you over to my channel now. Um, this is my YouTube channel. This is, I've had it for a little while a long while um, as you see I'm up to this but if you notice over in my subscriptions I've got a lot of people that I look look up to for getting information learning stuff um, the Timster was one of them uh, tech with Tim Grant Grant Abbott is a really really good uh, uh, discord server to go to if you really want to learn how to model I will drop that in the description uh, so that way you can uh, go there and say hi to Grant. Tell him that crazy said hello. Um, uh, uh, Fred KS is the lead on the Blender Wars. Uh, he's really good guy. His information is also in the description. And then I've, you've got Jacob Merrill, which is uh, Blueprint Random. Um, he is a really, really good coder. He loves messing around with a BGE 0 0.3.0. He's all into it. He's got all kinds of cool stuff that he does with it. Check out his channel. Um, I've got it in the description as well. So all these people, you know, some are older, some are newer, some are, you know, been in it for a while. Some of them, you know, died out when the, uh, uh, 
the BGE died out. Uh, the Tempsters just stopped doing it. You know, he don't do any more tutorials. I really wish he would come back and do some tutorials. I think that would be cool. Um, with that being said, let's see here. Where am I at? Oh, yeah. And last but least, I'm going to bring up my Patreon page. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, yeah, as you see, I have no Patreons. But I have some cool stuff. If you become a patron to help me out, that'd be great. Check out my Patreon page. It's on. It's in the links in the description. Um, once I get my games going, my patrons are going to get a lot of cool stuff. But I've got to get things going first. So this is part of the learn process that I'm working on, the learned experience. So if you're gaining anything for what I'm teaching or not teaching or learning, you know, let me know. And you know, I mean. Somewhere in this line of code, crazy is learning something, and uh, hopefully y'all are learning something from that. If not, uh, well, at least, you know, I'm learning a little bit. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to end it there. Uh, check out the links in the description. Uh, jump on over to my server. Give a wave. Give me some information. Give me some advice, what you think. And uh, we'll go from there. Until next time.